Nearly four years ago, students in Hong Kong took a stand against China's leaders and cried out for democratic reform. A yellow umbrella became the symbol of their defiance. And the protests lasted for months until authorities clamped down hard. But the movement itself was never snuffed out. Remember, Hong Kong was in British hands for nearly a century. But since 1997, China has really tightened its grip. Today, to call for freedom is to risk official reprisal. In tonight's dispatch, Sasha Petrosek shows us who is standing up for Hong Kong. From the ferries in Hong Kong Harbor, you get an eyeful. Financial towers rising from bustling boat lanes. And from commuters on board, there's an earful on how China's squeezing this former British colony. Definitely mainland China, China government, they like to control Hong Kong for sure. Squeezing its traditional openness in ways few expected. You think you might lose some freedoms? Yeah. That's the fear prompting Andy Chan to push for Hong Kong's independence from China. What I want is that democracy for Hong Kong. Most here don't support separatism, and Chan's national party is a fringe. But it's considered enough of a threat to Beijing that it's on the verge of being banned on national security grounds and Chan silenced. Hong Kong's Foreign Correspondents Club was pressured to cancel his speech last week, but it went ahead amid protests from Beijing supporters. And this time, I got to be uh, speak loudly, boldly, and I can't back down because I am standing for freedom of expression and freedom of, uh, of press, but not just about my party. Gradually, China has been chipping away at freedoms most in Hong Kong take for granted. Beijing supporters have been organized, funded, and placed in positions of power. Anti-Beijing voices have been intimidated and jailed. And any notion of democracy that could infect the rest of China has been blocked at every turn. The message from Beijing has been tough. Chinese President Xi Jinping came to deliver it himself last year. He said Hong Kong could keep some special privileges, but any attempt to endanger China's sovereignty or challenge the power of the central government would cross a red line and provoke sharp intervention. At the same time, Chinese authorities have been working in more subtle ways to limit dissent, using Hong Kong's own legal system to go after critical voices. They are clever in the sense that it seems to have a kind of a, 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 a facade of a rule of law. Mang Nok is a professor of government at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Uh, this is a very dangerous precedent in, in terms of uh, it opened the gates for the government to actually uh, uh, further constrict the various freedoms of Hong Kong. Not so, says Ronnie Tong, member of Hong Kong's top-level executive council. He says the former British colony is just compromising to help out its new rulers. And if some of the give and take is that we must not offend national security of China, I don't see it as too high a price to pay for the rights and freedoms that we continue to enjoy. I think people would have to realize this. Pro-democracy activists, like those who led mass protests here, say Beijing is taking away those freedoms regardless. In 2014, tens of thousands blocked Hong Kong's roads for weeks to try to win more democratic rights before police moved in. Four years ago, during the umbrella movement, uh, there's tear gas, pepper spray. Joshua Wong was one of those student leaders protesting right on this corner. Like others, he's since spent months in jail for demonstrating. He admits many Hong Kongers feel powerless. Now we are on a quite hard line pressure from Beijing. Even we can't mobilize people, so they block the road tomorrow, but the day will come. Except the space for political protest here seems to be shrinking by the moment. Sasha Petrosek, CBC News, 
Hong Kong.